but you can never completely flee because when you leave the object, you still need the object to reproject what you have to project onto the object. So in some way, you can never entirely rid yourself of the contact of the object and you're all the time trying to rid yourself of the object because the object, the therapist in this case, has become a persecutory object, but he will go on being a persecutory object because you can't stop projecting, and you can't stop projecting because the conflict that you're trying to fight is going on. It doesn't go away because you just need a therapist. Now you will have the same conflict somewhere else, and the psychotic patient knows that, right? So the thinness or fragility, the prematurity and the tenaciousness, as contradictory as they may look with each other, are the three characteristics of what BM calls a psychotic transference. This is a psychotic transference. Sounds really unpleasant. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> really unpleasant. Yes, but if it sounds unpleasant, to you as a therapist, just think of the patient suffering, how unpleasant it is. Well, that's what I was kind of referring to. I yes. Yeah, using understatement. Exactly. Right. Right. Now, um, Robert? Yes? I'm going to close because I'm not feeling well. Okay, that's fine. I have I'm a sorry. stomach virus, so I'm, I'm going to go. Sorry. I'll see you next time. Okay, I hope you get better then. Okay, thank you. You're right. Bye. Perhaps to a lesser extent, those projective capacities are made use of by neurotic patients as well. Say it again, please. I, I, I was trying to close here. But it I'm thinking that there's <coughs> something of a continuum between the functioning of a neurotic and a psychotic. And that the way I'm thinking about it now is that it's a question of degree. It's a bit like what Becky said, that we're all one... What did you say? One stressor. One, stress one stressor stress away. I mean, it, it, I mean, maybe, maybe it's not the only way to think about it. But but the the relentlessness of the projections, for example, doesn't have to be quite as violently done by a neurotic, but it can be there as a feature of the uh, 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 relating. In other words, I'm I'm thinking that 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 phenomenon is not exclusive. To the psychotic. Um, it, 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 let's put it this way. Um, it is exclusive to the psychotic personality, but psychotic personality is mm -hmm. not necessarily only for the psychotic. Meaning no. that you are psychotic, it just means that you have two modalities of functioning where one or the other may prevail mm -hmm. and therefore the one that prevails is veiling the one that yeah. is having lesser importance, right? But uh, again, um, for our purposes to understand Theon, the psychotic mechanism par excellence is the destruction of the mental apparatus. It damages, it really damages your psyche. Well, not really, because in reality nothing changed, but it is such a powerful fantasy that you will, from there onwards, function as if a very, or, or well, function or dysfunction, um, as if in reality, an important aspect of your personality was collapsed, broke down, or got impaired, right? Not in the neurotic. That does not mean that in extreme situations we may resort to one or the other, right? And some people have more, the American uh, ego psychologists call that ego strength, Right, have more ego strength and therefore are less prone to um, have to attack the psychic apparatus because the reality is unpleasant because they have the strength to bear it even if it becomes difficult and for some others this may be a problem. Mm -hmm. But we do want to know 
that, and this again is Bion, I mean, we may argue with Bion, but before arguing, we want to understand what he says so that we can say this is this and this is that. Psychotic personality and non-psychotic personality are like apples and oranges. They are very different. Mm -hmm. In practice, since both can coexist in the same person, and Bion, to me at least, is very clear saying that this is what happens in practice, you can see in people sometimes the one, someone, sometimes the other. In a borderline personality, you can by definition see both coexisting. You can see the one and the other. Right? And Ray Green said that a psychotic he, he defines the borderline personality saying the psychotic personality the borderline personality deludes and corrects its delusion. But it can't stop deluding. You see? Meaning that with your non psychotic personality you correct your delusion. But the fact that you can correct your delusion and say this is a delusion doesn't mean that you stop deluding. You're still deluding. You're all the time doing both things. Your psychotic personality is deluding. Your non-psychotic personality is telling you this is not true. This is a delusion. There was a movie, remember, many years ago, uh, of uh, I, I think it was uh, about a real person. It was, I think, a mathematician. Oh, a beautiful mind. A beautiful mind, beautiful mind yeah. right. Yeah. He knew he was, he ended up knowing yeah. mm -hmm. that he was schizophrenic. And he knew when his schizophrenia would kick in and he could control it, but he could not make it go away. Mm -hmm. He could only tell himself, this is schizophrenic, this is psychotic. Mm -hmm. But he was still being psychotic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember it? someone telling me that they did you see the movie? Oh, yeah. 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 That they worked with a, with a man who I think was schizophrenic and that whenever he had a fantasy about being Superman that that was the cue to knowing that he was going to have a, a some kind of episode. Yes, yes. He, le he learned to identify the people. Exactly. It's fascinating. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. I just want to know that we know what a bizarre object is and how <coughs> it comes to exist. Do we? Well, uh, your, your, your example of the gramophone. <laughs> exactly. But uh, uh, it could be the fillings in your teeth that are speaking to you. You're oh, getting yes. ra radio waves through those fillings of your teeth. I knew a patient like that. Right. Or one who believed that he was Moses and could go off the end of Florida underwater to Israel. You know? Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Or somebody who uses a olfactory hallucination and believes that they're being poisoned by the gas that's coming in. Right? That kind of thing. Exactly. That yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Right. Now, that said, uh, and why Bion says that the bizarre objects have traces of superego, this has always intrigued me, it took me a long time to understand, because I thought that what Bion meant was that the superego gets projected out, whereas Bion, what Bion meant, I understand now, is that the bizarre object at being critical to you or being angry at you behaves as if it had a piece of a superego, not necessarily your superego, mm -hmm. right? Since <laughs> the su well, uh, what what we typically call a superego mm -hmm. is a critical instance within ourselves, mm -hmm. right? That says, "Don't do this, don't do that, repress this, stop this, etc., etc." The projection of your psychotic anger into the gramophone mm -hmm. makes the gramophone look mm -hmm. as if the gramophone had a trace of a superego, saying, I'm very angry at you, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or the patient feels that you, the therapist, are all the time criticizing mm -hmm. him, and you don't have the experience that you're really criticizing him, but the patient believes that you are. Well, that may be a projection of the patient, of a part of his mind, into you about something that he is too angry to want to understand. And then every time you talk, the patient thinks that you are this angry object mm -hmm. that is criticizing him or her. That's a trace of a superego, and sometimes a very angry superego. I would say most of the times, all these objects that are created by fragmenting parts of your 
mental functions and projected into external objects become persecutory objects because you expel them with hate and with full force and therefore they always you feel they always want to come back at you and then Bion says something very interesting he says <coughs> since we still need to take in things from the external world in order to orient ourselves out there we now psychotic have to take in the very same awful objects bizarre objects that we created and when we take them in we feel that we are being attacked or that these objects attack us as we take them in. Uh, Bion gave an example in one of his papers where he, Bion, gave the patient an interpretation. The patient was... What was the patient doing? Uh, the patient spoke of a something about uh, his mother uh, and <coughs> Bion interpreted to the patient that he was angry at his mother because the mother left him with the bottle when she was going away with father. And the patient held his head, right, and said, my head is breaking to pieces. Mm -hmm. And Bion interpreted to him that now the patient felt attacked by the thought that Bion put into him again, which he angrily was trying to project out, mm -hmm. right? Well, that would be an example of, feel, of the feeling of attack when you take back in, right? A piece of understanding that you painfully and hatefully wanted to rid yourself, but since you still need to live in the world and you want to get some clues, when these pieces of understanding come back, they come back with the same force that they have been ejected or projected, or even more violently so. And Bion says they come back through the same via that they have been ejected. Through the eyes, if it's a mm -hmm. visual hallucination, through the ears, if it's mm -hmm. an auditory hallucination, through the nose, if it's been a, an olfactory hallucination. Mm -hmm. Bion calls that, and Flandoni states that, Projective identification in reverse. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Why would it be more? What, what would cause it to be with, with even more violent? The, the reverse. Okay. Um, suppose that uh, I meet you in the street and I slap you. What would I expect <coughs> that you would do to me? Well, possibly a harder slap back. Exactly. Well, that's the reason. Mm -hmm because I expect that this is what you would do or what the object would do to me. I offended the gramophone that in my mind is, has a personality because of my psychotic projection of my personality on my personality attributes onto the gramophone and now I expect that the gramophone would do to me what I would do to anybody if I had been projected into or included into. Therefore my subjective experience is that it's coming back with full force, perhaps more even than my original attack. Mm -hmm. Right? So how, how are we doing? Too overwhelmed? I, I'm not quite sure though I understand the, the concept of the fragmentation. Um, it, he speaks of sometimes of several pieces. How can you talk more about that? What how, how what makes it happen in several pieces, or is it is it that you, I don't know? Okay, Blandoni makes a nice distinction, right between now we go to that dissociation and splitting, actually. He's paraphrasing Bion. Uh, Melanie Klein, who was a very untidy writer, uh, although she was terribly.